In the previous lesson, we learned about the periodic table of the elements, this awesome tool that chemists have for understanding matter in the world around us. You see, the periodic table helps us to make predictions about matter. It helps us to predict the mass of atoms of a certain kind of element just by where the element is on the periodic table. It also helps us to understand the number of protons in each atom, but most importantly, it helps us to predict the characteristics of a type of element based on other elements nearby. And that's the real beauty of the periodic table. It shows us something about the patterns and organization and order in the world that God created for us. There's this beautiful order that underlies even the smallest pieces of the things that God has made. That allows us as scientists to study the world around us and make predictions and understand the things that God made because it's all very orderly and organized. In this lesson, we're going to continue to take a look at the order of the way that atoms are by looking at one broad group on the periodic table and understanding its properties. We're going to be looking at the metals. And in this particular lesson, we're going to look at the way the atoms of metals are structured. And we're going to just begin to discuss some of the properties that metals have because of the way the atoms are structured. Let's get started by looking at an image of most of the periodic table of elements. And I'm going to show you where all of the metals are on this periodic table. Notice that they take up well over half of the periodic table. This is the group of atoms we're going to be talking about today and trying to understand their characteristics. Now here's something interesting. Even though all of these atoms in this group have many things in common with one another that make them metals, at the same time, each one has its own unique beauty that can be studied only by looking at particular atoms of that element. However, in this lesson, we're going to focus more on what's similar instead of what's different. One of the big things that all of these atoms have in common is that they tend to lose an electron to form a one plus ion. What you just saw was an image of an atom of sodium losing an electron to form a one plus ion. It now has a positive charge because it lost one of its negative charges. In order to make a point, I wanted to show you this ion first. I'm actually gonna give this sodium atom its electron back to make it a neutral sodium atom once again. But I want you to pay attention to how I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you the positively charged ionic core without that electron from the outside that was just lost. This just shows the center part of the atom without that outer electron. And then I'm going to put that outer electron back on. Now this whole thing that you see in front of you, that positive center and then that outer electron is a neutral sodium atom. I just want you to take a moment to absorb that. Remember, I, first I took away an electron to make a positive ion. Then we just envisioned that positive ion as a single sphere instead of all the protons, neutrons, and electrons that make it up, even though that plus sign there is all of those parts, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And then I added back the outer electron, so together that plus charge in the center and that negative charge on the outside make a neutral atom of sodium. You need to think about atoms of metals this way in order to truly understand their properties. Because what happens with atoms of metals is they have these outer electrons that are delocalized. They're not really connected very closely to the atom at all. They're very free to move around between the cores, the positively charged cores of these metal atoms. These outer electrons, though, aren't really tied to a specific atom. And that's what makes them delocalized. Let me show you a bunch more sodium atoms. Notice that each time I'm going to add a positive core, I'm also going to add an electron to cancel out that positive core. But let me show you what this looks like on a bigger scale. So here are several sodium atoms, all with their outer electrons. And those outer electrons form this negatively charged C of electrons that is attracting the positively charged cores almost like glue holding them together. That's what gives metals the properties that they do. It's these bonds between 
the electrons and the positively charged cores, this is called metallic bonding because it's what makes metals do what they do. So these metallic bonds are made up of positive nuclei in a sea of electrons. Notice the sea of electrons in the background. These are negative charges that want to attract positive charges to themselves. And then the positively charged cores that are interspersed within that sea of electrons, it makes a well held together substance. And that's what metals are. And I just want to remind you that these positively charged cores aren't just a single positive charge. They're made up of all of the protons, neutrons, and inner electrons in the atom. However, they have one more positive charge than negative charge, and that extra negative charge is outside the atom, delocalized and able to move around freely between these positively charged cores of atoms. Okay, so if you haven't wrapped your head around that, what that causes to happen is because there's this negatively charged C pulling these positively charged cores together, metals usually form crystals. They usually form these carefully arranged groups of atoms that are all lined up and all attracted to one another along a crystal lattice. And what that means is because it's a crystal, it's going to be a solid at room temperature, most metals are, and it's going to have a pretty high melting point like most metals do. So hopefully this gives you an idea how metals are structured. The big things to understand are that there's delocalized electrons, electrons that are far enough away from the nucleus of the atom that they're free to move around between different metal atoms, and that sea of delocalized electrons pulls the metal cores together, sort of like glue, to make a crystal element substance.